friends and welcome to my office. If this is the first time you're visiting our homestead, we want to extend to you a very, very warm welcome. If you have been here before, welcome back. If today happens to be your birthday, happy birthday to you. So here I am in my office and I need to improve our organization. It's a reasonable small space and organizing it is very vital in order to be comfortable to work in. So today we are going to build a shelf that is going to go above those two bookcases that are on each side of our window. Now there are a couple of interesting things that we want to do. First of all we have this detail, this cove uh, finish piece that we will have to replicate, put it in our new piece and also in order to maximize our storage we're going to go above a little bit so we have a little bit of storage above each bookcase and then it's going to go across both of them to give us a lot of storage, right? Okay. So we're going to go and, and get some. So we're going to go from this to this. So here we are with all the material we need and for a small project like that we actually need quite a lot of material, right? We have three boards, each board is one inch by eight inches by eight feet, right? Which means that it is three-fourths by seven and a half. Yeah. And we were lucky because the detail that the bootcases have is, is a very common Something you can find in any profile, store, right? the common profile. Right. That one is called a cove. A cove. Okay. This is a cove. This is not a cove. Any questions? All right. So we're going to start the construction, and again, while we're going to show you our specific application, I will also point out the points where you can build this as a standalone self or to meet your specific needs. So as always, we're going to give you step-by-step -step instructions and tips and tricks along the way. We did buy some uh, stain for this, and that's a poly stain, which is nice, I think, right? And we hope that will match reasonably well with our uh, furniture. And this is the only tricky part of this uh, process, right? Mm -hmm. We need to, to match with our furniture. So right. We'll and we're not that. we're not sponsored. No, we're not sponsored. We but we bought it. it. Right. So I created two storyboards here because we don't care about measuring in this channel, right? One of them is the depth that we need. And as you can see, I've marked it and put an X on the side that we don't need, right? Mm -hmm. And the other, and I've done the same, is the, the width. And again, I've marked it and I put an X where we don't need, right? There we go. And okay. by width, I mean this dimension here. Mm -hmm. And I presume both of them are the same dimension. I will check them just in case. Should be. I'm sorry, you can see the back of my head, right? Of course we yeah. can. Yeah, it's the same dimension. Okay. All right. So once again, we're going to build with very minimal knowledge of dimensions. So because this is actually going to be a finished piece, like it's like furniture, and these usually are not very good, it has riding and it's it kind of damaged a little bit. We're going to start first by squaring this, right? So that is simply cutting a small piece to give us a nice clean edge. And in this case, basically the width of a blade. Correct. Well, even a little bigger because I saw a little damage here. Okay. And what you saw me doing there is because uh, the capacity of our saw is not as big as the board, we mm -hmm. lifted it and that allows you, gives you a couple of extra inches so you can finish the cut without, and as you can see it's a nice clean cut, it doesn't have, when you 
turn it around usually have a little bit of a mm -hmm. imperfection i would say right okay all right and now we're going to do that on every board and cut them to length okay so the area we want to join is rather rough as you can see so in this specific instance and because this again is it's not going to be like a normal project that it is a, a workshop or something that it is we put together for our personal use it is for our personal use but it has to be nice and flat because it is for a furniture so we're going to show you this and we're going to run it through our joiner and we're going to show you the, the results when we're done and by the way here is our joiner it came very recently out of retirement we haven't used it for over two years so hopefully everything will work out well and here is our board after we put it through the planer and as you can see it looks much much better it starts raining so we have to go to move inside now so here are two boards and these are the two jointed sides we joined two sides one of them was in pretty good shape but the other definitely needed joining right so what we're going to do now is we're going to flip it over right we're going to flip one of the two boards because we need this and this to be connected right okay so we're going to flip this board and we're going to put them together so the two edges that you're going to join, you want them to be together. And there is a short bow on the board here, so we're going to have to use clamps. Which is okay, but you see here that there is no bow. It's a perfect connection. Mm -hmm. That you can see. Yep, it's really well. Okay. And then so here we need to apply some pressure when we right. do it. Alright. Okay. Will you remember which is the joint in area? So now we're going to mark, we're going to use disco joints to align the joint correctly. And in visco joining, all you have to do is make a line, right? Do one more here, because I will be in the middle. I want it to have, okay. Does that first one need? Oh, you got them both, okay. All right. All right, and now we're going to, to bring the visco uh, to here, and we're going to cut it. Let's As you can see here, we have a little bit of gap and in order to have a perfect connection, all you have to do is actually press it down. And what I'm pressing on, you might want to change angle here, I'm pressing on the handle of the joiner and the, the thing closes, right? The board goes flush. Correct. With, with That's why you need to have this correctly set, which is uh, three-fourths the setting of the fence here, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're ready, we're going to align it. We're going to make our cut. We're going to repeat that through all the you can make sure you are your flush. Ready? Just clean the the pocket you made. If you don't have a compressor, you can use a, an implement like a screwdriver, right? Or if you're so inclined, you can use compressed air from the store. I think that's the most expensive option. But it's definitely an option, right? So did as you, you get can this see, one? Hmm? did you get this one? I think so. Apparently, I didn't. Okay. So we did the first one. We're going to set up now to do the second one. So when you're setting your second board, the board you're going to make to the first. There are two important things about these lines that we do before, right? The first one is they tell you where you need to do the pocket hole. And the other is the reference surface. The pocket hole doesn't go exactly in the middle of the board. So if you do it the other direction, not only you won't know where to do it, but it will be incorrect, like it will be upside down in essence. So mm -hmm. you're going to have a leap when you don't want to have a leap. Okay. Does that make sense? So. So on the other one, the line, the, the cut was actually closer to the top of the board. Correct. And so it will be on this one. And so it will be on this one. So it will align them perfectly. Okay. All right. So we'll be... Is that the board? 
On the second board, you put glue inside each of the little pockets you made and also through the whole uh, dimension of the board. And this will provide the strength you need for your good join. Right? And again, we started experimenting with this glue, primarily because of the channel. It's a little more expensive, but it, it dries much quicker, which for this project may not be a good thing, but you know, we'll see. Miss Wizard will not be happy if we have to go and buy new boards. All right. And now we're going to lay them down and connect them. And you assign lines. Align the lines. You do not clamp until everything is in. Because once you clamp, you won't be able to move. So that looks okay to me. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we are going to, to make sure that the connection is good. Okay, so start with the clamp here, because this is open. You need that big clamp? Does it look like it's aligned correctly? So far, yeah. And it's a little bit off, isn't it? It's okay, the biscuits can handle that. All right, so we're going to, to put all the clamps on and we'll return. So one of the dangers when you make this type of connection, especially if you over tighten your glues, is that you're going to create a cut, right? You mean over tighten the clamps? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what I said? What you I said glues. Oh, the glues. <laughs> you over tighten the glue. Uh, and by both of these sides picking up, you're going to make a valley on the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So use a straight edge of some sort. And I think we're good there. What do you think? Seems pretty good, yeah. We'll go on the other side. Was that fast enough for you? I bit that would say you're moving too fast. So we're pretty satisfied with that, right? Yeah. What about here? So we're going to wait for this to... It's not perfect, but it, it is possible. Yeah, okay. Like, I mean, you will see a big... If there is mm -hmm. an issue, you will see a big gap. Yeah, okay. So we are uh, satisfied with this and here again. We're good. So this is a, a nice tool before it dries. And in our case, I think this is might be drying already. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. This glue is very, very fast, guys, right? Mm hmm So now we're going to move in uh, making the sides, right? Yep. And the process is the same. The only difference is that they are not as wide. Mm -hmm. They're actually substantially, maybe under a foot or about a foot each, and we need four of those. Yep. All right. We'll so that. here is our uh, self, and it is drying. And as soon as it dries, we're going to take it to the table saw, and we're going to rip it to the correct width. So while this is happening, we start working on our third uh, board. Remember, this project will take three main boards, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to take this, this last board that we have, we're going to take it to our chop saw, and we're going to cut it in half. And we're doing that for economy of um, material, right? Yep. We don't want to waste material. Because wood is like gold. Yeah, this, this board was $10,000. So, you know. <laughs> It's a $30,000 shelf. Oh, of course, I'm joking. We had to put a second mortgage in the house, but you know. Uh, we're going to go outside and cut this in half. So our boards are cut in half, and we've already made the biscuit uh, pockets to, to start joining them, right? Okay. So, and we did run them through our joiner to have a nice flush finish. In essence, this will become our, our sides. And in order to be our sides, we need four of them. So we cut it in half and then we're going to cut four pieces out of this to make sure we have exactly what we need. Okay. Alright, so we're going to connect them with biscuits and the next step will be to cut both this piece and the long piece to rip it to the correct width. Go. You don't need to put too much, so that's why it's good. It doesn't want to come out.
no one got hurt in the production of this sound. <laughs> Again, we're using a, a quick set glue. If this is the first time you're using a, a biscuit joint process, this is not the recommended glue, right? Right. It will make you sweat. And on the next piece, we're going to put glue in, all, in every surface, including the, the biscuit The pockets. channel, the channel. Yeah. And here you can see that the biscuits are not in the middle, right? It's very clear. Right, it's toward one side of the right. the depth of the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey! Why are we not closing here? I need the full plan. Right over the biscuit. Oh. I don't know that that one's long enough. More paper towels. It's actually fast. More important to do a fast clamp. You want me to bring more clamps? Wider. Grab one of the clamps off the other board. I'm sure it's done by now. Well, if we need, we need another clamp. Yes. To go over the fourth biscuit. Where is an opening? There. Yep. Okay. Do you want me to go higher? Please? So we're doing a little bit of sanding here using our new and improved uh, sander that we gave you a first look a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. So Miss Wizard being the expert Thunder, how that performs? Feels good. Feels good? Yeah. You want to go faster? Give it a bit. <laughs> it definitely looks like it's good, right? Yeah.
That's what right after the very nice. So we finished ripping ourselves. This is the final dimension. This is the correct width and the correct length, right? So this is the final dimension of ourselves. Now we're going to have the similar thing. We're going to have to sand and cut the correct dimension our uh, sides. So we'll do that on the right. trying to cut it before, that's what I was trying to do. What happened? My thumb got caught between the board and this thing. Okay. Okay, I'm looking at the blade. So Mrs. Wizard is uh, doing a very fast sanding on the edges of the four verticals we're going to need. And we are reaching the point that we're going to start assembling now. Most of the major uh, cutting and assembling of the board themselves is complete. So we are ready to start the, the final assembly. So we're using uh, screws to attach the sides to the top. And we've made a mark, a pencil mark, to know where we are because we have a a three-fourths reveal. Go. Okay, now our storyboard will help us because we're going to put it inside there. So where is the storyboard? And we know where to put our other side, right? Now the hard part will be now to, we need to mark where we need to make our holes here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're not towards the edge of the board, it's a little harder to make sure that you have the right place to make your screws, right? 
So here we use one of our uh, simple uh, angle irons and one of our one to three blocks because they are perfect in, in every dimension, right? So we place the block there and then we draw a line. You see the line? Mm -hmm. And I also put the block on the bottom so we knew not to go over. Because if that is square there, then square here, we know we're square, right? Okay. So that is just a little tip on how to achieve that. Because again, that's probably one of the hardest things you have to do in this whole project. Mm -hmm. So that when you come through to this board, you don't come out on either side. Right, and you're correct in your, in your screwing. Right. Unfortunately, as you know, we do not have an assembly table. And in a project like this, it's become really evident because you need a flat surface to make this and assembly. this is quite a long project. Right. And part of it is because you want this to be on the same plane and, and here we're going to have more elements, so it will not be that much of a reveal. You're going to see in a few moments. Uh, but assemble it on a flat surface, so you don't have to worry when you put it on the wall or on the furniture, wherever you put, that it is uh, wiki wonky. Wiki wonky. Wiki wonky. Mm. It's a new term. You liked it? Mm -hmm. Caddy wampus. Caddy wampus. Okay. Wiki wonky. Same thing, right? Sure. All right. So. We're going to, to get going on this. So here we are working at the wee hours of the night because we didn't finish our project. So we just cut a one by four to a uh, two and a half inch width because it's what we need for our uh, base part of the trim. So the next step will be to cut it to length and we're going to show you the next the step after that. The next next step. The next 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 yeah, next. So we're on the okay. underside of our base trim piece and you can see all these little pieces of tape that we have put there and they are actually covering the bottom of uh, holes this is the, the best board we have so we're going to use what we have, right? Mm -hmm. and we're going to fill it with wood filler This was a convenient straight edge that you've got going on there, right? Yeah, high, high end tools. I think you need to put a little more in there. Uh, I don't know if I have enough, so I'm going to do all the other ones and then we'll worry about that one. Sorry for the shaky camera work. I'm trying to observe and. Now, you could use a poxy for this time. as well, right? Yeah. In both cases, you need to put tape underneath. Or in all cases, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We have more. This last one right down here. Boy, that's close there. That's a close close up. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we are going to. Where's my super duper tool? Mm-hmm. Go. But your finger. It's is okay. There. I know my finger is there. Okay. All right, that's good. Yeah. So it looks pretty good. I'm gonna let that dry. And each of these should dry pretty quickly because they're not huge, right? Well, this is pretty big, actually. That one? Okay. Okay, so this 
so that's probably the largest of them. The next time we go in the store, we are almost out of this. Okay. And this is a stainable, again, we are not the uh, sponsor, but because we're going to stain that, you need a stainable wood filler. Right. Mm -hmm. No stainable wood fillers will just spoil your piece. Yeah. So we're using our heat gun here. You could use a, a hair dryer if you don't have a heat gun. And what we're doing is we're drying the wood filler so we can actually start sanding. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is obviously on a low setting. You're not trying to burn the wood here. You're just trying to dry the filler. Right? Yeah. You don't want to burn it for sure. As I said, the hair dryer will work as well for this application. This is usually used to heat string, uh, cable, mm -hmm. cable wraps, and cable wraps and things like that. But you know, all right. I'm not sure. But this is a big one. I'm worried about that. So here's our latest dry fit, the last dry fit, and this is exactly how it's going to look. But we have to stain it after we fully assemble it, right? We're now waiting for the wood filler to, to dry and then we're going to attach it with glue. You want bread nails too, Mrs. Yes. Wizard, or not? Okay. Okay, what do you think now? So we're starting the staining, uh, the staining process, the staining the process. The staining process. And we're going to do a little bit of the staining first to avoid any uh, raw wood sewing. We're going to stain this surface here and the vertical, I guess, right? Is that what we call it? Yeah. Because we find through, we found through experience that if we don't do it that way and we completely stain it first, you're going to have a white line where the stain, unstained and stained would meet. So we're staining the piece behind where the facing trim and then that curved trim are going to go right. so that behind it you don't see raw wood. And then we'll assemble and then we'll finish all the staining. Okay. So basically staining these four sections. Yes. Well, and we need to stain all the top. This mm -hmm. top section. Oh, uh, okay. And then attach all the final trim right. pieces. And then stain the rest of it. Okay. This is just to improve the finish. It's not a... Mm -hmm. Try to remember, do, is that an issue that we have also when we uh, do Suzuki Man or no? It is. That's why I tend to prefer doing the burning before we assemble a project because you see seams and you'll see sections that aren't, don't get burned correctly. So, okay. So we're going to do that, then we're going to do the assembly. So we are... There. We are now using some brad nails and we have put glue underneath to hold the trim pieces. And uh, what I wanted to say, I forgot. Anyway, that's what we're doing. We're putting the trim pieces so on. So the trim pieces are now on here. The, the flat ones and we still need to do the round one. And the next thing we're going to do is this, the final thing. Mm -hmm. I'm flush here, am I flush here? Not quite, bring it out just the hair. There we go. Well, I guess we have to put glue first on Yeah. Okay. Okay. And let's move it and we put glue. So here we've right. switched to a pin nailer for... Because this is easy to split, even with brass yep. nails. Yep, so I'm going to bring this in. And it barely leaves a mark. In fact, when we stain it, I doubt you will be able to see it. You can see they're teeny tiny. And when you are away, I you really cannot see them. Enough. No, I don't really think they are.
So this is our profile. Cool. So here we are staining. A nice grain already is mm -hmm. popping out. Yeah. And again, you can see this profile on that piece. Again, okay. this project has taken longer than I anticipated. Primarily because we don't often build projects that they are uh, finished furniture, right? Mm -hmm. We have done it in the past, but that is not our normal build. So I think we... We mis I miscalculated the time that it requires. I'm always amazed how good grain dimensional lumber is. Because mm -hmm. this actually is a dimensional lumber piece. The rest of them are higher quality lumber. They are what they're called finished boards. Right. But the dimensional lumber stains beautifully, mm -hmm. right? But even the finished boards ha will have a nice grain once oh, yeah, it gets sure. out there. Yeah. Okay. So here we are. The the standing process is finished and I think our detail will match very nicely with the existing detail in the bookcase. What do you think, Alpida? Mm -hmm. It's going to be nice. And the only different piece of wood that we use is this detail here, you know, the skirt. The cove. Which is actually, no, the cove is, we, we mm -hmm. bought it yeah. already. I'm talking about this, the mm -hmm. skirt. Which is actually a dimensional lumber versus all the other lumber you see here. That is actually finished kind of lumber, right? It is. And so these trim pieces were actually used from this yeah. same board. Remember, we cut them. Right. Well, I'm explaining. Oh. And then this we had from our our pile of wood, and that is uh, the dimensional lumber. This was more finished lumber. Right. But you can see the grain. Everything's drying right now, so it looks a little a little weird in the finish, maybe on camera, but. Uh, the clear coat is drying and you are still able to see some of the grain. And in a couple of hours we'll take it in the office mm -hmm. and we'll show it to you there. But this is uh, exactly the design we had in our mind, right? Well, you had in your mind. Yeah. I didn't have any design in my mind. I was just following. You were designless. I was just following along. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As you okay. should. Psst. <laughs> Oh look, our repairs, they, they look fine actually. They took the stain very well. Oh yeah, this is where the, let me see if I can focus that. Well, it's still not Well yeah, you can still see the shine, but I mean, it doesn't look like that's putty. It just looks like it's a dark knot. Which is why, that's why you need to buy the stainable putty. The stainable putty. variety. And then here's another one. Uh, I think it looks, that looks perfect actually. That looks almost like a knot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They just come out looking like a knot. And I think that works out fine. Which is much better than having a hole. Mm -hmm. And here's the other one that was actually all the way down the side and we put tape on the side and you can't tell that that's... You cannot tell that that's putty. Let me... There we go. Okay. Excellent. Yep. So here we are. This is our finished uh, product, project. And it really is exactly what we were envisioning, right? It's what you were envisioning. You don't like it? I like it, but I said earlier I had no vision. You were visionless. Yes. This so it, it really looks good. Now, if you wanted to make that as a standalone, you can change these legs and you don't need uh, four. You can have one in the middle somewhere, right? If you want to make it a self that fits on the wall. Mm -hmm. And you could still do it. So you can modify it. The basic principle is what we saw you and what we wanted to show you was how to, to build something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it has a nice little continuity. That right. was the whole idea, right? Yeah, the light's not too great in here. I'm trying no. to... There we go. It's adjusting a little bit now. And this is pretty much the same as this. Like, mm -hmm. slightly different, but... It, it but it, it definitely echoes that, so you can see the same profile there. Now, we don't have any children, and we don't worry about this falling. Especially since I'm going to put things here, so it would be hard for it to fall. Yeah. But if you have children and you're worried about that, about this falling, you can put a dowel or two on each side, mm -hmm. right? So it will not be moving. But I right. don't think that I, I'm not concerned about that. Are you? I mean, no. I think it's gonna stay put just where you want it. It is not very heavy, but it won't move by itself. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean. Right. So we hope that this was a good uh, instruction or. What, what tutorial. A, a tutorial on how to build something like this 
Uh, of course, matching it to what you have will be different because from, uh, depending on what you have, right? Right. I mean, in our case, I, I end up with what I wanted. Mm -hmm. I think that looks like yeah. a good pair, right? Yeah, it definitely does. So I'm very happy with this outcome. Good. So we hope you did enjoy this episode. And if you did, we'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, press the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to watch in other episodes of the Urban Homesteading channel. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and of course the Urban Homesteading channel. Stay safe, wash your hands, put your masks on, get vaccinated, so we're going to see you again in our next episode. Farewell, friends.